Welcome back. It has been three years since global CEOs vowed to play a bigger role in fighting racism following the 2020 murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Ahmaud Arbery. However, a new report is showing us that race and gender discrimination is still a big problem in the workplace. Here to explain, editor of Forbes Women, Maggie McGrath. Also joining us, Huma Abedin, vice chair of the Forbes and Know Your Value 3050 Summit, which is just a month away. Maggie, what does this new report reveal? So Catalyst, which is a nonprofit that studies and promotes female leadership, surveyed more than 2,700 women from marginalized ethnic and racial groups in the U.S., U.K., and beyond. They found that 51% of these women experience racism at work. What this means practically, they're experiencing discriminatory con conduct and comments to outright mm. racial slurs. What's more, Catalyst found that women with darker skin tones are more likely to experience racist treatment at work than are women with lighter skin tones and women who are queer and or trans are also more likely to be experiencing this racist racist treatment than are women who are straight and cisgendered. Whom uh, respondents were also asked to share their e examples of their experiences with racism in the workplace. What did they say and did they talk about how it, it impacted their ability to grow? Well, we heard some jarring stories in this report about what women have had to endure uh, in the workplace, everything from overt racism to racial slurs. Um, one woman, in fact, said that she was belittled uh, for being from a quote-unquote savage culture. Another woman was told by a colleague that her uh -huh. box braids were considered unprofessional in the workplace. A third woman reported that a colleague of hers would constantly publicly comment how lucky she was to have fair skin and blonde hair while she herself was darker skinned and had thicker hair, and that her manager and the deputy manager would praise and agree um, with these comments. And in terms of their getting ahead, aside from the social and emotional abuse that comes with this racism, this notion of um, mm -hmm. being in an environment where uh, you are maybe not thought of for a promotion or for in initiatives in the office. And some of these women very troublingly actually said that they um, explore environments that uh, perhaps there aren't uh, uh, mostly uh, white colleagues or predominantly white colleagues around them. And so it's really a dismal uh, report when it comes to equality and really puts, uh, and frankly, racism. Um, yeah. And it really puts a lot of, uh, I think, responsibility on leadership about how to address this, this problem. So let's talk about that, Maggie. What are the takeaways for company leaders and how they can better tackle racism? They need to be doing a lot more. This Catalyst report found that nearly 50% of the women surveyed said that they do not feel that senior leaders are displaying allyship or even curiosity about allyship, mm -hmm. which means they need to get curious. Do the anti-racist homework and do not make your women of color at your office do that work for you. Then create a culture in which that is anti-racist. Speak up and say something when you see or witness racist behavior. And finally, create a system of accountability. It's not just enough to say it. You have to create a system that actively addresses this behavior when it arises in your workplace. All right. So th these are the types of challenges we're going to be talking about that women pl face in the workplace at our upcoming 3050 summit in Abu Dhabi. Pretty raw and real conversations. The summit is taking place on the days around International Women's Day starting March 7th through the 10th. We've already announced an incredible lineup of speakers, including Hillary Clinton, Malala, Catherine O'Hara, Billie Jean King, Gloria Steinem, Aisha Curry, and many, many more. And Huma, uh, as vice chair of the summit, you have another uh, exciting new speaker announcement that is ready for us to go today. Tell us more. Well, today we're very excited uh, to announce that Karen Wazin, uh, a Lebanese British fashion entrepreneur uh, and digital influencer, will be joining us at the summit. You know, she started a blog, Karen's blog, in 2016, where she just took us into her journey as a new mother, as she traveled the world, her love of fashion and design and home decor. And, and it took off. I mean, she really connected with people that now, all these years later, she has almost 8 million followers on Instagram. Instagram. 
and her whole aura and energy is really contagious. She's now has a namesake uh, uh, eyewear line, and so mm. we can't wait to hear what this entrepreneur is going to do next, and maybe we'll even pick up some new sunglasses uh, yeah, so during the summit. Absolutely, and I mentioned Billie Jean King, also Misty Copeland. Maggie, before we go, uh, another amazing athlete will be joining our lineup. Who is she? She is 27-year-old Zara Lari. She is the first wow. Emirati female figure skater to compete internationally, both first from the UAE and from the Middle East overall. She is also the first to compete in a hijab. She actually was docked points on her performance the first time she competed in a hijab, and she's been instrumental in changing those rules. What's really interesting about her, and which I really appreciate, you know, the message of the 50 over 50 and the 30-50 summit is it's never too late. Zara says that she started figure skating at a quote-unquote late age. She was 12. And now <laughs> look at her. She is a groundbreaker and a role model to women in the region and beyond, and I'm so, so excited to hear her speak. It's so amazing. Amazing. And next week, we're going to have a major announcement as to who else is coming. Our star-studded lineup will, uh, will get a lot bigger next week. Maggie McGrath and Huma Abedin will uh, look forward to having you both for that. Next week, we'll be hearing much more from both of you as we gear up for the 3050 Summit, which will focus on creating cross-generational alliances to provide guidance and insights to women at every stage of their career, while also offering diverse perspectives and rich cultural immersion and it's not too late to join us for more information on how to register today or and take part in this life-changing event head over to forbes.com or knowyourvalue.com